Jones. Tarzan and the Diamond of Our Share. Tarzan and his friends are in our share, the Forbidden City. In the great pyramidal temple of Ma'achu, where Wolf has been killed, Helen Gregory and Magra are held by King Suten. To Tom and Larson in the ceremonial hall appears the hideous flaming mask of death. It speaks English, prophesying their death before the next full moon. Tira, queen of the Hesse Hare, offers Tarzan and his friends their freedom if the ape man will bring to her the father of diamonds. Tarzan agrees, and as he and Don leave the Queen's chamber, they meet Tom and Larson running from the hoarse-voiced threat of a guardian ape. The three men follow Tarzan back to the ceremonial hall. The ape-man approaches the white casket, raises the lid. He reaches down to lift out the golden disc. As he does so, not one but two of the prehistoric monsters leap from the depths of the pit and shoulder to shoulder charge directly for him. With crooked fangs bared, wicked red eyes gleaming with rage, they shriek their blood-curdling challenge. Rita! Rita! Sacrita! Run! Run! You cannot fight them both! Stay where you are, all of you! Rita! So quickly that the eyes of the three men who are watching can scarcely follow his movements, Tarzan slips the brass rope from his shoulders. The running noose whirls up and over the ape man's head. Snake like it twists and twirls in rhythm with the steely wrist which controls it. What ain't he going to do? Watch, Lawson, watch. The two great brutes, sure of their prey, leap forward. With the speed of light, Tarzan's rope flashes through the air. It hovers for the fraction of a second above the heads of the advancing monsters in a wide noose. Swiftly drops down to encircle the huge hairy shoulders. With a quick jerk of his arm, Tarzan tightens the rope. Yeah, you're smart to call, boy. Yes, showing us the air. It is. It is miraculous. Tarzan leaps behind the great pillar. As the brutes crash into it, he circles pillar and ape, smashing the two helpless monsters securely to the stone column. Come here, Don. Oh, quick. Look down there and see if there are any more ape. Oh, don't do Tarzan. I shall look. No, I can see no one. There's no hurry. Right. I got the diamond. Come on, Tom. The two hours room. Hey, Ben, right behind you, Tom. Meanwhile, Helen and Magra, in their barbarically splendid quarters, discuss their hopeless situation. You must not antagonize the king, Helen. He is all-powerful, and we must be diplomatic with him. You're probably right, Magra, but I simply can't do it. Think of Brian, worse than dead. And what have they done to Paul, Tarzan, and the others? Right now, they may be suffering torture. I know, dear. But to antagonize the king openly only makes matters worse for us. We must do everything, anything, to gain time, to put off this double marriage as long as possible. Tarzan will find some way of saving us, I am sure. Oh, I hope so. But do you think Hakiru can... I have faith in Hakiru. I do not believe he has forgotten that Tarzan saved his life. But Helen... He does not dare dispute the word or will of the king, at least openly. Oh, no, of course not. Oh, if I only knew that Paul and Tarzan were trying to help us. Shh, the door is opening. We greet ye, Helen, Gregory, and Magra. I 
tell thee, Hakeru, the beauty of these two maidens is such as hath never been seen in Hakeru. Thou speakest truly, O Atif. To what do we owe the pleasure of this visit, your majesty? Hmm. We come to tell ye that the day is not far distant when ye shall become the brides of two of Hesse Harrier's noblest sons. If you only knew how much I hate you. <laughs> Hate is akin to love, Helen Gregory. They lie but a hair's breadth apart. Soon I shall teach thee the difference, my beautiful queen, to be. Do you mean that the day is set, Atif? Even so. I, Atif of the Hesse Hair, have decreed that the ceremony shall take place at the annual unveiling and elevation of the Father of Diamonds. When we stood before you in the Great Hall, there was a woman beside you. Was she not the queen? Aye, and she still is, but not for long. Why, what do you mean? On the day thou and I are wed, Tira shall no longer be queen. But Suten, Atef, it is against all the laws of the Hesse Hare. Silence! I am Hesse Harrier. But now, Helen Gregory, I am come to discuss thy wed. What shall it be? From you, I want no... No, oh, King Suten, if there's any kindness or decency in you at all, please, please break the spell that holds my brother Brian. Hmm. It may be done. Oh, I thank you. I... If thou comest willingly to share the throne with me. Oh. Hast thou no wish, Magra? I ask only that you sit free before men who came here with me. The fate of the stranger within the gates of our share lieth not wholly in my hands. There be the council of thirteen. And what do they say? <laughs> Their decree shall be made known to ye and to thy friends at the unveiling of the Father of Diamonds. Didst know that the man called Wolf hath already met his death? Wolf dead? We did not know. How was he dead? The hands of the guardian apes. Because he attempted to steal the great diamond. But come, Hakeru, the council awaits. We must complete the details for the punishment of Tarzan of the Age. Be not afraid, ye women of the outer world. I have not forgotten that I owe my life to Tarzan. I come, O King of Kings. Back in the corridor leading to Tira's quarters, Tarzan, clutching the heavy golden disc, races along ahead of his two companions. Breathlessly, they arrive at the copper doors. Tarzan indicates a stone, lighter in color than the rest. That one, Donald. Quick. We oui, wish oui, to say. In. Hurry. Close the door, Tom. The Tarzan of the Apes? The father of diamonds? Yes, here it is. Place it here at my feet. And now I, Tira, am mistress of the Hesse Hair. The Council of Thirteen shall henceforth obey my behest. That's all right, Tira. I know all about what this diamond does for you. But what about your promise to me? Tira doth not forget, O oh, Tarzan. But first, the sacred gem must be cared for. Aria! She not gone! Hey, ye, Tom. Look at those fellas. Where did they come from? It been like... Like, like magic, eh, Larson? Of a truth, Monsieur Tom, they did appear to materialize from from nowhere. <laughs> and yet three of them to lift the disc which Tarzan carried alone. They've been taking it behind the queen's chair into another room. Half hit by Larson's broad back, Tom's covetous eyes follow the progress of the golden disc. Presently, the white-clad figures vanish as silently as they appeared through a door at the far end of the spacious chamber, and Tira faces the four men. I am in thy debt, Tarzan of the Apes. A few days, and I alone shall reign supreme in our share. Thy wish shall then be granted. A few days, O daughter of the sun. Oh, I dare not show my conquest till the unveiling of the father of Dan. Ah, that will be a sweet revenge upon Suten and his council. They will open the casket and find not. <laughs> and now, what about Helen Gregory? Having the diamond, you should know if she is here. 
Is that right? Oh, not until I have gazed into its depths through the blue veil, which I may not do until the time of the unveiling. I will then know where to look for the woman. Hmm. And what about Margaret? I have learned that she is even now not far from here, in the quarters of the Arkef Souten. But she too must wait. No, Tira. There'll be no more waiting. We'll get her now. Where is she? But she dare not enter there. So tell I me. beg, Tira, tell me where I may find Magra. Well, if ye will go, see ye yonder small door with the symbol of savage face? What of it? It openeth into a secret passage which leadeth directly to the chamber where Magra now is imprisoned. Then open it that we may go to that chamber. Very well. But remember, if aught happens to ye, Tira is not to blame. Open the door. As ye wish. Come on, Dardo. Tom, Larson. As the three men approach the open panel, Tira smiles wickedly. She turns and walks quickly to the room where the father of diamonds now lies. Behind her, Atan Tom cautiously, silently follows. The queen touches a block of stone. It swings aside. Behind it, Tom glimpses the golden disc. He smiles grimly, darts quickly behind the great stone seat, then swiftly to the open panel through which his companions have vanished. Behind him, the door softly clangs shut. In the dark, gloomy passageway, Tarzan, Darno, and Lawson hurry forward. If you do not hurry, Tom, you will be left behind. Tom! Tarzan, Atan Tom is not with us. He must have remained behind. You'll have to look out for himself then. We'll probably find all we can take care of ahead of us. Hurry up, Larson. They've been coming. Hey! Look at the roof in front of you, Tarzan. It's been caving in. Stand still, both of you. As the three men pause, a massive hinged block of stone swings down from the roof of the passageway before them. An insistent hissing sound becomes audible. Goes louder. Louder! Suddenly, down through the opening in the ceiling, four roaring yellow clouds of live steam. In an instant, the passageway is a seething, boiling cauldron of death. 